allow us to see the creation of the newest Dark King. Thank you to our valor patrons, Rebel, 4765, Midnight Gem Lord, and Sean. And thank you to our $3 members, Recliner Plays, and Rebel, 4765. And another thank you to our $10 patron, Robbie Uchiha. And another very big thank you to our $25 patron, Alex Ice Rose. And another very big thank you to our $25 member, Alex Ice Rose. Now, we have this breakdown slash review and live reaction to chapter... 216 of Bru Rocco. Please and friendly, you're all this other chapter in the comments section down below. Leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Also, hit that little notification bell so you miss out on any videos that come to the channel. Also, also I do a Patreon below. Each support result as one, kind of one, Dama, the links to the videos, early content, and more. You also now become a member of the channel for as three months a month to get the same perks and more. Now, let's hop into chapter 216. What's up, guys? All here, and here we are to read chapter 216 of Bru Lako, which is known as Stealth Slay. The old SS. It be like that when it be like that, especially when it be like that. Whew! I'm excited. I'm excited because last chapter, I mean, it didn't technically end on a cliffhanger. I mean, it kind of did, but like the cliffhanger happened like mid chapter when Baro took his shot. We don't know. And bro scored. We don't know if bro didn't score. We have no clue. So I'm a little bit excited. So let's not waste any more time. Let's hop right into it. Editing me. Ready? Three. Two, one, go. Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. As you can tell, I have it on me and I keep it on me at all times. So do not be surprised, for it's hard to surmise when I do not have it on me because I always have it on me. So let's not waste any more time. Let's hop, let's hop right into it. I'm excited. I'm excited. <clears throat> Borrow. Oh, wait. After Snuffy offers Borrow a chance to become his successor as Uber's king, what is Borrow's response? Well, obviously, you know, that's a, <laughs> like, obviously he said yes. <laughs> that's the only thing. Like, I mean, I get it, but like, like we know <laughs> there's no suspense in that particular opening, but we, we do know he took it. Like, unless he's, he's not playing autonomously. They're literally playing with Barrow Like, like you don't, you don't score a hat trick if you're not the team's chosen king. Like, I, I don't know how to put it in any other way, but you do not score a hat trick if you are the team's chosen king, but you know. Never know, maybe he said no, or maybe there was like, there are probably conditions to it. There are probably like some weird conditions to it. I highly doubt it was like pure, basic, like, oh yeah, sure, whatever. Let's see. Ooh, I like how he did the shading there. The shading only, wait, unless I'm mistaken. Yeah, the shading only covers one part of the internal eye and then leaves the rest of the eye unfazed, but he underlined the, the, um, skeleton. Ooh, I like that. I like that. That's neat. I don't, yeah, like usually they don't do shading like that. Like, no, look at Snuffy's eyes shading. Like usually it just goes straight over like everything and overlies everything but no this is a very specifically unique type of shading i like that i like that probably to show like i mean maybe i'm just reading too much into the art because you know me <laughs> what are you here for if not for me to read too much into the art especially peak lock art but oh wait yeah <laughs> i'm pre-drawing because this is peak lock i expect it to be peak <laughs> like i'm oh, sorry it's peak it is literally peak every week if i had to describe blue lock as one thing it is peak every week from the art to the character writing to the story writing to the development all of it has been peak every week even when i don't like it <laughs> like nagi and raya regressing it's still peak <laughs> i didn't like it i think it's bad for both of the characters if you can tell by my videos on them but still it was peak and it was every week <laughs> but let's see borrow shall i your specs and mindset Oh wait, Baro shall I? Your specs and mindset, sir. Out of all the strikers in Blue Lock, heck, in the entire Neo Egotist League, you boast the best numbers at a striker. You know, a lot of people say that about Baro. But I still lean, I, like, this is Loki spoiling a video I'm working on, but I do plan to, like, rank all the Blue Lock players, like, in two main ways. Obviously, they're the two main ways to do it. As a general player, and then very specifically as a striker, because obviously, Blue Lock is made to make the world's ultimate striker, the number one, and obviously, Blue Lock right now is also making alternative types of players, like defenders, midfielders, heck, look at Gagamaro, a goalie, like, straight up, they're making everything. So, I obviously got to rank the players on multiple different metrics and fronts like i can't expect to universally rank them all as just like one thing and be like oh that's it because there are variances but like even with that i wouldn't say borrow has the best specs as a striker boasts the best numbers as a striker like he literally wasn't 
I, I mean, like, maybe, no, this is even pre-development. Like, he's saying this pre-any training he gives Barrow, that Barrow has the best, boasts the best numbers as a striker. He didn't. He wasn't even top six, <laughs> striker-wise, according to Ego, way back when. And to be fair, that was pre-U20. But I don't think any third selection amps, or third selection amps, did Barrow any good. I don't think he has anything like that. He scored one goal in the U20. Like, and I'll admit, there are many better strikers than Barrow. Like, I would literally just say Ren and Sheetha. Especially, like, right now, this is pre-any training, pre-any stuff like that. Like, just going straight post-U20 and ignoring all the neo Egotist League stuff. Shido should have better numbers. Not only does he have more goals, not only was he number two in all block, not only was he literally, like, he was literally such a solo striker that, bro, was doing stuff on his own, carried his whole five-man team straight through second selection. Like, that's crazy. Was the only other person other than the number one striker, Rin, to actually score on the world five. Like, Shido should have way better numbers than Barrow. And, like, I get it. I think Barrow... I have the Googler on me. Hold on. I need to, <laughs> I'm about to check Barrow's stats. I'm about to try to see how tall... Because I know Nagi's taller than him. I don't, I'm not sure if Nagi's stronger. But then again... Then again, it's before the training. But I know in the spinoff manga that I still need to react to. I saw I saw the image. Like, <laughs> Nagi straight manhandled Barrow. But that was way back in first selection. Who knows? Barrow may have gotten amps. But let me see. Barrow... Oop. Not like that. Not like that. Barrow. Blue lock. Let me see. Because I would, like, personally, at least, I would put Shido above I would also put Rin above. I definitely put Rin above as an overall player, but even hypothetically as a striker. Rin has just more... <laughs> is, is, is it wrong to say, but Rin just has more street cred. <laughs> like, Rose scored more gold. Well, except for maybe. We don't know what Rin's first selection lineup looks like. We know Barrow scored 10 goals in first selection, which is crazy. Which is crazy. Don't get me wrong. But still, like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to find out. I'm trying to find out. Let's see. So, Rose, 187 centimeters. That's like six... Like 6'3-ish, I'm pretty sure. And then like Nagi's 6'4. I already know Nagi's taller than him. <laughs> it's so weird to think about. Let me check Shido. Where is Shido stats looking like? How tall is Shido? Because like maybe he's saying, maybe he's saying Barrow has like the best build for one. And I get that. Like in terms of Barrow's physicality, I can I can definitely see that. Shido's much more like, how do I put it? He's Okay, so Shido's two centimeters shorter. But then if you want to talk about like, if you're just going by sheer height, then it would be Nagi, right? Because how tall is... Our boy Nagi. Shashiro Nagi. Shout out to the Blue Lock Wiki. They have, all the, they have all the information I need. So let me see. Yeah, he's 190 centimeters. So while Shido's two centimeters shorter than Baro, Nagi's three centimeters taller than Shido. Or no, not three centimeters taller than Shido. Three centimeters taller than Baro. I mean, like, e ego-wise, I can definitely see it. But even then, Shido's ego's kind of cracked, too. And we've seen Flo Rin at this point. So, like... I don't really know. Like that, I, and I know I'm putting so much weight on that statement. And who knows, maybe just Snuffy's gassing him up for some reason. But I don't know. That seems a little bit off to me. Like, really? You boast the best numbers as a striker? I don't, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> I'm genuinely not sure about that. Like, really? <laughs> really? Really, Snuffy? You trying to just hype up your boy? Are you mad you didn't get Rin? You mad you didn't get Shido? <laughs> like, like you, you, you can tell me. You can whisper it in my ear. Like, what do y'all think? Do y'all think Barrow literally has the best numbers as a striker? Because personally, I would borrow three. Who with Kunigami's amps? But then again, Kunigami hasn't done all too much, so I can't necessarily give Kunigami too much credit. In fact, Kunigami is kind of playing a knockoff borrow role, like stealing goals, getting in the way, stuff like that. So Kunigami, he's new to that kind of role. So I'll kick Kunigami out. But like post U twenty, we'll we'll even hold off Neo Ego to stuff because obviously borrow has got the amps. We can definitely tell that by how he's how he's moving with his team. Bro got a hat trick. Simple as that. But pre hat trick, pre Neo Ego this league. Who were your top three strikers? If I had to give my general thoughts, I put Shido number one as a pure striker. Unstoppable in the penalty box. Scored literally the best goal in the series. I'm sorry, Nagi fans. As great as that five-way volley is, the the backflip, bicycle kick, score off the throw it. Like, that's too crazy. I'm sorry. It's insane in every way, shape, and form. Then Ren. Because Ren's kind of just crazy. Like, Ren is literally just cracked. Like, I'm sorry. Once again, these two are the only two to score on the World Five. So those are the those are literally the best feats in the entire series, the best goals in the entire series. They weren't playing against randoms. They weren't playing against Farter. They're playing against the World Five, and then Barrow. I'll give Barrow. I'll give Barrow third. Pre Neo Egotist, like I'm not sure how he's doing now, but pre Neo Egotist, 
And Barrow was pretty solidly third. Like, there's no doubt in my mind about that. Barrow has a great build. He obviously has that striker kind of mentality. Bro has <laughs> one of the strongest, if not to his detriment, egos in the entire series. I see it. I, I see it. But not the best. Not number one. I'm sorry. I wasted so much time with that first bail. Let's see. That's Uber's next game. Let's work together, right? Okay. 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 Barrow. So which one is it, Barrow? Which one is it? Do you want to work alone? Or do you want to work with people? Like, bro, bro, which one is it? Why do you refuse, bro? Why, why do you refuse? <laughs> bro, now you're confusing me, buddy. Now you're confusing me. Which which one is it? Are you mad that you got styled on, bro? Like, I'm sorry. It happens to the best of us. This is a full-grown man, and you are still... I saw on the wiki, he's 18. Like, so you are also legally a full-grown man. But, like, Snuffy's, like, 26. Probably older. I have no idea how old Snuffy is. And I'm not going to Google it. Because I don't think that information's out yet. Let's see. I refuse. All right, Barrow. I am. <laughs> Snuffy's, like... <laughs> and I don't even blame him. I literally don't blame him. Like, why? <laughs> why? Why are you? Like, I, I am actually a little bit confused. Like, what is this? I am who I am. I'm different from your friend who decided. Yeah. I'm... Besides, I don't want a crown that's handed to me. I also don't want to be like you. A coward who's scared of the future. Like, borrow. Broski? I know you think you're spitting. I know you think that these are some of the hardest bars ever spit in the entire 216 chapter run of this manga. But dog, you sound stupid. Do what you... <laughs> like, legit, obviously something's going to happen. Something likely happens later on in the chapter that gets Barrow to agree somewhat with Snuffy's mentality and, like, trade under him. But, like, if this had... If this... If he didn't, if he really just said, no, I'm not going to work with you, you never would have played again. You literally would have been kicked out of Blue Lock. Like, legitimately, because you would get nothing in the new Eagles League. You would get no value, nothing. Because he doesn't have to play you. <laughs> like, he still is the... Like, I don't... That is so stupid. Like, I don't know. Maybe... I get it. I get it. And before the Barrow fans... Oh, but this is Barrow's ego. He has that Dark King mentality. I do get that. Stay hydrated, folks, by the way. I do get that. I do 100% understand this is the pure, absolute, cleanest like, display of Barrow's ego, but this is idiocy, especially after all Barrow's development, Barrow knows, Barrow knows for a fact, he's gonna have to hold, he's gonna have to fold, he's gonna have to fold at some point, <laughs> like, we've seen it, we've seen him realize that, okay, fine, as much as I would like to be on my own and run it like that, the world doesn't work like that, <laughs> like, legitimately, not only has Snuffy gone over the fact that the world doesn't work like that, like, two chapters ago at this point, like, straight up, hey, you're kind of just an employee. But in this case, you literally would... This is so stupid. Like, does he not think? Like, he realizes that if Snuffy does not play him, he doesn't get any stat bonuses. He doesn't get any training extra from Snuffy. He essentially wastes 105 days until the U20 World Cup, and then he's not playing. Like, he already has to realize he's competing with, like, monsters. Like, even just, once again, slicing off Neil Egotis League stuff, he's playing with monsters. Shido, Rin, those two, those two mainly, <laughs> in terms of like sheer strikers, but still, it's not like he was even in the top six before U20, it's not like he got to play until like the last, what, quarter of the U20, like bro literally has nothing to show for, so he's literally willing to shut down and sacrifice everything, all that work, all that dedication for nothing, because he realizes, like, Baro literally couldn't play for Japan, like he literally couldn't play for Japan at all. He would be blacklisted if he gets kicked out of Blue Lock, which he would be because he wouldn't play. He would not play. He would get less playtime than Igaguri. Because I feel like for some reason, I, I don't know, somehow, some way, I feel like Igaguri is actually going to get some playtime. No idea how, no idea why. But I feel it in the back of my bones. I feel like the Blue Lock Mangaka. <laughs> I feel like they are just going to do it to specifically mess with me and all the other Igaguri haters. There are a lot of us. But regardless, like, bro, what? Really? Stupid. Like, I, I don't know. I don't know. This is why I cannot like Barrow 100%. Like, I get why Barrow is a lot of people's favorite character. I can see why people love the guy. He has a fantastic design. But it's moments like this. Moments of sheer, like, downright stupidity. He has moments like this here. He has moments like this in first selection. He has moments like this in second selection. He has moments like this in the Nagi spinoff manga. He has moments like this all the time. And, like, I can take a little stupidity. I'm not very smart myself. <laughs> I am very slow in terms of, like, picking up on stuff. And I also am very headstrong. I understand where Bar was coming from, in a sense. But at the same time, I got to think about this logically. 
I say no to this man who is literally giving me giving me the opportunity of a lifetime to live out the exact path that I want to live out. And then I sit on the bench for four games straight, and then I don't get to play. Ever. Especially now that Shido's actually part of Blue Lock. Like, the, before, the reason that Shido wasn't the Joker option in the U20 is because Shido was literally put on the other team. Like, Shido was legit removed from the play. Now, the U20 could literally run the exact same team they did, and instead of swapping you in right there towards the end, they swap in Shida. And then you're good. They don't need you, Paro. They already don't need you. So you're already going to have to work to prove yourself. And then you decide to not even work to prove yourself. You're just going to sit there. Do you think Eagle's going to play you if you really show nothing for 105 days straight? Like, really? Really? I don't know. I'm sorry. I know I'm pushing this mad hard, but, like, this is so stupid. And especially since, like, I mean, I get it. I get it. Not, he, he thinks he's better than Snuffy's friend. But, like, bro, this man just came to you. This full-grown man doesn't know you from a can of paint. Doesn't know you from a can of paint. He just sees the same kind of path his friend was walking down. And he was like, hey, my friend lost the way. He lost the path. You are, gonna, you are walking down that exact same path. And I do not want to see a young and upcoming star star. The, I do not want to see a young, young and upcoming star destroy themselves in the same way and end up like my homie so here let me help you let me give you the exact thing you need and want in this moment and i will literally train you because as you can see i am legit better than you i did just style on you absolutely so let's make this work and yet borrow discredits all that and just throws it away and says he's a coward that's scared of the future. he's literally offering you the future like how is he a coward that's scared of the future if he's still playing if he's still working on himself if he's still developing if he's offering to develop you if he's offering to make you a new game like what bro what what, what? i don't know bro so sleepy sometimes i don't get it, bro wow okay can't believe you refuse that kind of golden opportunity <laughs> i could just like me for real for us i could like i don't get it either <laughs> like maybe i'm just missing something about that king mentality but i just don't get it let's see <laughs> can't believe you idiots are actually buying into his nonsense Okay, in previous chapter review, or the chapter review before that, I talked about how I was actually a little bit intrigued to see how Ego felt about Snuffy, right? Because I was like, well, Ubers is basically the opposite of individualism. It's kind of just like, do what the boss says. It's literally the exact same thing that um, Aiku was complaining about in, well, not complaining about, he was literally properly critiquing about in the U20. He thought that the Lock 11 would be just like how all other coaches in Japan were to him. They were just going to be a whole bunch of high schoolers that followed their coaches' plays, absolute. And that's all Snuffy's telling them to do, but, like, on a grand scale. And I thought maybe, hypothetically, Ego would be against that. But then, my brain, once again, since I'm <laughs> not the fastest at putting things together, I was like, well, I got to think about this. We are still working it around, trying to get these people to develop their own ways. And by giving them play styles, they're going to learn how to develop their own play styles. And giving them this versatility in this environment to grow, it'll work out just fine. And obviously, as brought up very eloquently in the comments, yeah, Ego hired Snuffy. <laughs> he wouldn't he would know about Snuffy's ideology and what he would be putting the kids through, and thusly he could respect and understand that. So, I'm, I, like, I, maybe maybe the me that didn't understand why Ego would hire Snuffy would agree with Borrow, but no, Borrow, you dumb, dumb, bubblegum idiot. Like I told him, I only fight for myself. And I don't know, this seems, once again, kind of like character. I mean, I guess it makes sense, right? Because Borrow's whole thing was never yielding. Even though he did yield. He did pass to Isagi. That, like, broke him. It literally mentally shattered him to the point where he awoke a new play style. I get that. But, bro. If there's one thing that you should have learned in your whole time in Blue Luck, and I thought you did. It was the fact that when there is opportunity, you need to take it. That's all you've been doing. It goes, it goes all the way back to your first appearance where you saw an opportunity to take control of the field and you took it it goes all the way to your appearance in the nagi side manga where you saw an opportunity when your team was working against you and you took it and you scored it goes all the way to you with naharaya against isagi and nagi where you took all the opportunities and you took it and you lunged through and it goes all, all the way up skipping a whole bunch of other opportunities you had and you took it goes all the way up to you 20 when you were not picked in the starting 11 but you were picked as a sub but you saw your opportunity and took it 
If you were on this stupid kind of dogmatic, I only fight for myself kind of mentality, broski, you wouldn't have played in the U20. And so that's like, you wouldn't have played because you weren't like, you weren't the striker. You When you got subbed in, you still weren't the striker. You were just a dude. So like, <laughs> I don't know, Barrow. This seems like active idiocy. It seems like active idiocy, bro. What? Why, 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 why are you, why are you actively being dumb, bro? Because this is an opportunity. So you should take it. Especially considering, like, give me one thing if Sanafi was just all talk. But he literally styled on you. He flipped you, bro. <laughs> he straight flipped you. Like, the only time I've ever seen someone flip is when I did it to someone else. Way, but then again, it was, like, years ago when I was just a really big kid. And we were playing soccer in the gym. And my homeboy, who we played soccer and rec together, I, like, stomped my right foot so hard that when he went to, like, try and steal the ball for me, he tripped and i moved my leg and i flipped him kind of I, I didn't even do like a full 360 flip like i made him fall on his face snuffy did the exact same thing to you and yet you are a full-grown man like i flipped i forget how old i was at that point probably like a 13 year old at that point when i was that age and i was like really really big Burrow, Snuffy doesn't even seem to be the same size as you, and he still flipped you. He's still styled on you. So Snuffy is not all talk. He's proven to you that you are simply inadequate. And this whole point, the whole point of the Neo Egotist League is to train you and prove your value. So how are you going to ignore the training and ignore the ability to prove your value? Like, bro, what? What? How stupid do you got? Like, maybe, a, maybe I'm missing the point. And Burrow fans, enlighten me. Because I've been enlightened before by all. I've been lighting before by every single type of fan, except for real fans. I still get, nah, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But like, <laughs> legitimately, I don't know. This is so stupid. I don't get it, bro. All right, but let's see. Relaxation theater room. Oh, nice. They got, they got trees. So, okay. And, and you know what? I'm clowning on bro so much, but obviously he took the position somehow. So then something's going to happen. I'm clowning on him because he's being stupid, but like, something, something has to pop off. Something has to pop off. So let's see what pops off. Borrow, I know Borrow, I know the Borrow fans are foaming at the mouth with Borrow with his hair down. Let's see. Instead of a relaxing forest, let's watch a movie, okay? Oh, look who it is. Don Lorenzo. All right, hold on. What kind of voice do I give him? I forgot what kind of voice I gave him a couple chapters. He hasn't shown up. <laughs> he hasn't shown up in like the past two or three chapters. So I need a, what voice did I give him? He, see, he sounds slimy. He, well, he looks slimy. So what does he sound like? Ay. Uh, I even got us some caramel popcorn. I, I mean, that's kind of just Snuffy's voice. I, I even kind of got us some... I, I guess I... I put more slime into it. I, I even got some caramel popcorn, borrowed, Sean. <laughs> oi. Oi. Change it back to the... <laughs> I'm stuck. I'm stuck in between voices. <sighs> hey. Change it back to the rainforest relaxation mode. Get back to the remote. Looks like Snuffy is taking an interest in you. I'm shocked that Blue Luck even has caramel popcorn. Like, like I love caramel popcorn. So, like, I'm not even mad at Donnie Boy. But, like, where did he even get that from? <laughs> do you have to, like, custom order that? I don't know. It's in a Blue Luck sign bin, too. Like, do they just have more food options now? I genuinely don't know. <laughs> Was that, like, part of the um, World Masters contract? They were like, hey, I get it. You're feeding these kids. Whatever. But I ain't eating all that. And I ain't eating just steak either. Put some options on that menu, Ego. We got money now. Put some options on there. And then Donnie got his caramel popcorn. Looks like Snuffy's taking an interest in you. I have no I still have no idea. I'll figure it out. Ah! Don't spill the popcorn. Disgusting. Plus, don't eat here. Besides, I told you to change it back to forest relaxation. <laughs> oh, look at his face, bro. Look at his face. Oh my. Because he wins trophies for every. What is. I gotta be able to figure out his voice. There's gotta be something I can give him. This is what happens when you have a super limited voice range. Like, I don't, I don't have the deepest voice out there, I don't think. Like, unless I artificially make it deeper, I don't have the deepest voice out there. So, like, you would think I have more range. Like, I can go super duper high, too. But obviously, I'm not gonna give him this voice. This is the voice I give the mini Percy's. Because the mini Percy's are concerning but I, I i don't know like i can't find that like appropriate voice for this guy like i feel like i have it in my head but i cannot like formulate it 
Because he wins trophies. Because he wins trophies. i got to make a light and air, right? Eh? Because he wins trophies for every team he plays for. Snuffy is known as the crown messenger. But the real reason he plays football, the reason why he aims to win in all five big leagues, is to achieve the dream he once shared with his best friend. Ah. See, like, <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know what is it. Like, I'll admit, there were some sad backstories in Bullock, up to a point. Like, Bichir's backstory is pretty rough. Rin's backstory, having your own brother come back and be like, you're worthless, stop playing soccer. Like, that's pretty rough. But, like... Hiori literally being a tool for his parents. Snuffy literally having his homie, you know, not be his homie anymore, willingly. Like, <laughs> we're past the, I guess we're just past the total chapter mark. So the mangaka's like, all right, I hooked them in with the cool visuals and the characters. Let's get dark. <laughs> like, next thing we know, Loki's backstory is going to be like... <laughs> His parents wandered in a crime alley with Joe Chill, and bada bing, bada boom, Loki was the only one who walked out. And that's why he became the God Sprinter. So he could run away and outrun the thing that took his parents away. Like, legitimately. Like, we are getting dark, dark. And watch Lorenzo have, like, a super dark backstory, too. Like, bro. However, that is... Jokes aside about how dark this is getting. That is, that is kind. Or even great for Stuffy. Like, he's literally just fighting to make sure that his friend's loss wasn't in vain like he and his friend didn't go through all that just to fade into obscurity like he will succeed no matter what no matter what it takes no matter how long it takes he will succeed for the friend that couldn't succeed with him for the friend that lost it all he would do it i like that right Whew, it's a rough <laughs> Life is rough. Life is rough. And I like how Bullock is going out of the way to reflect that. Especially through a character like Lorenzo. Like, this is the kind of guy... Like, look at him. Look at him. Look at him. He just... He, he looks like he smells oily. Like, yeah, it looks like he doesn't shower. It looks like this man showers once a week when he's told to. Yet... Yeah, and this is a guy who we know for a fact is obsessed with those fat stacks. Obsessed with the money, the bread, the swagger, the status. And that's what he mainly cares about. But even still, even with that being the case, he can even tell that Snuffy's like that for a reason. That Snuffy is doing what he does for a reason. Like, this isn't something, this isn't a crusade that Snuffy's taking for no reason. Even he, who sees people as nothing but numbers, as Kaiser himself pointed out, you just see people as numbers, bro. I don't even, I know I'm rock with you like that. Don Lorenzo is, has so much emotional intelligence, he's like, yo. Bro is literally, he gave you the offer to help him continue the dream for the legacy of a friend of his. He trusted you with that. He trusted with making you a better player and you still can't see that. You ignorant idiot. Like, bro, that's crazy. And then I like, and it's making me like Lorenzo because of all the characters who came to do it. I mean, it makes sense that none of the blue lockers could and obviously none of the randoms were going to do it. Like any of the other characters on Ubers who we'll never see again. Like none of them were going to do it. So it's good that Lorenzo came in and was like, hey, yo, bro. Let me talk at you real quick. 19-year-old to 18-year-old. Because bro has to be at least 19. There's no way. I, like, it's crazy that he's under 20. Kaiser's under 20. Well, Kaiser, actually. I could see Kaiser being under 20. But, like, this guy? <laughs> this guy? Nah. However, let's see. He'll achieve that once he wins. Serie A. What did I voice? That? What voice did I just get? I already blanked. He'll achieve that once he wins. Serie A. With Ubers. After that, I'll retire. He already announced that he's planning on becoming a coach after he retires. That's why Snuffy is looking for a striker to succeed him, okay? I don't care. Clean up your mess. Woo! Woo! Something about Uber's designs, bro. I don't know. Because, like, people, <laughs> people were kind of get <laughs> People were definitely getting on me for, like, tearing into Snuffy and his design. And, like, I know, I, I may have been a little bit harsh. But so is Nomura when designing him. <laughs> Snuffy looks a little bit harsh <laughs> with that schnauzer on him. Like I saw, I saw like some uh, like fake blue lock tweets. I was like, do you think Snuffy smells the room before he sees it when he walks into one? Yes, yes, he does. Bro has a schnauzer for five people plastered onto his face. He took his no, no, let me not say that. He took his friend's nose with him. Nah, but legitimately, I don't know. And like, I know a lot of people really like Lorenzo's design. Like, the golds, the tattoo, the hair, everything. But I don't know. Bro just looks greasy. 
Like, bro looks like the kind of guy you would find off off that fresh pack in the back of an alleyway. Like, I, I don't know. Like, I just, this this face is so unsettling to me. I, I can't even, like, I can tell you why. It just feels off in every way, shape, and form. I don't know why. And, bro, watch your mouth, bro. Watch your mouth. You try to be Isagi? You ain't him, bro. You may be an Isagi hunter, but you are not Isagi Yochi. Stop throwing around words that have no meaning behind him. The line, why is Lorenzo cheesing like this? <laughs> why is he cheesing like this? Want to check out my golden tea? Gabu Gabu. <laughs> Okay. Huh? Get out of my face. <laughs> I lived in... Oh. Oh, I was, I was kidding. <laughs> I was kidding. I was kidding. I didn't mean... For, I didn't want to actually have a sad backstory. Oh, Lord. There's going to be a reason for the goals. I lived in a dark place when I was little. My parents abandoned me. I survived on the streets by swindling people out of their money. Oh, are you okay? <laughs> Munishiro Sensei, are you okay? Kadayaki Munishiro Sensei, are you all right? What is this? This is like the third dark one in a matter of five weeks. Like, when did we get Hiyori's backstory? Like, six weeks ago at this point? What is with this? We are getting more, like, depression <laughs> in a six-week span than we've gotten over the entire multi-year run of the manga. What is happening? <laughs> Something? <laughs> is everything all right at home, bro? Is everything all right? Like, legitimately, What? Bro, that is insane. After living that awful life for so long, I started to lose hope. Bro's parents are banned. Okay. All right. So if we're gonna if we're gonna do some ranking, if we're gonna do some ranking. Lorenzo automatically has the worst. Bro literally was an orphan living on the streets and having to swindle people. Then it's Hiori. Like bro literally lived in a terrible household where he was viewed as nothing but a living breathing talking object that his parents could vicariously live through and then snuffies i know snuffies probably isn't the best but like man obviously the loss of a friend is the loss of a friend but like still i have to put snuffies at the bottom but darn lorenzo i mean that explains his obsession with money darn that explains oh that explains his obsession with money and why he only views people as numbers because he had to that was the only way he could live because he didn't have any sort of support system Wow. Yo. <laughs> I think... <laughs> My, but I think, like... I, I know some people complain about, but look, oh, like, the characters aren't that deep. The backstories aren't that tragic. Where, where, where's my darkness? Where's my edginess? I think... I think uh, the Bogaga just heard that and was like, fine. You want dark? You want edgy? I can provide you both of those things. And for the low, low price of trauma. Let's do it. Darn, bro. Darn. I was on the verge of perishing when... Hey, kid. Want to play football with me? Give. Give me money. Sure. How much do you want? Oh. How does Snuffy... <sighs> bro, I haven't seen bro even step foot on the field, yet he's already the best Neo Eagles just league coach. I mean, it's not close. Like, I love Chris Prince. Like, Chris, before this chapter, probably would have been my favorite. Or even before last chapter, really. Because, like, Snuffy really got me with his backstory. Chris Prince doesn't have a backstory. Bro just <laughs> bro spawned in perfect. Perfect with a dark side. Like, that literally is Chris Prince. And Lava Hino also didn't really have that. Like, we, this is the only guy we're going out of the way to, like, establish a backstory for. Which is so crazy. Like, bro has to have, like, the most wacky and goofy designs out of all the, the uh, masters. Yet he has the most in-depth backstory. He's connected to one of his own players. Like, wow. Like Chris, like Chris didn't have any connection to Augie. Augie was just a dude who played football. Lava Hino didn't have any connection to that one dude on his team that Pachiro and Otoya played with. He's played football. But no, Snuffy came with the clutch and found Lorenzo in the dump. Bro literally has flies around him. He's wearing torn clothes. Yo, bro, what? What? Yo, Blue Lock. Blue Lock is just chef's kit. Chef's kit. So peak, bro. What? Sure, how much do you want? Let's do business together. Wow. You know, and you know what? Lorenzo even actually kind of looks like his friend. Like the, the image that we saw of his friend laid out on the ground when he when he dropped. Kind of actually does look like Lorenzo. Same little beard and everything. So Snuffy, maybe just walking down the street. Who knows? It doesn't look like Snuffy was like, doing anything in particular it's not like he heard of lorenzo obviously wasn't a soccer player 
But Lorenzo just saw a guy who somewhat looked like his friend in the deepest depths of despair and said, fine, come with me. I'll raise you out of the darkness. Let's get you some bread. Let's get you a life worth living. Wow. He is just the best. Like he, he will keep fighting with the ego. In fact, honestly, considering we don't have an ego backstory and ego's kind of just been vibing for a majority of the narrative. He right up, like, he, him and Ego, like, if Snuffy gets one more piece of development, he's better than Ego for me. <laughs> like, in terms of overall coaches, he's going to be better than Ego. That is crazy. In three chapters, bro, in three chapters, bro has the most goofiest, long-nosed, Squidward-built design that I've ever been seen. Yet he's still so peak. What the heck? Only in Blue Lock, bro. Only in Blue Lock <laughs> could this kind of design have me in my feels right now. What? At first, I thought, who the heck was this crazy idiot? That's why I challenged him. Give me money, right now. Replace my rotten teeth with gold ones. What do you think Snuffy did after that? He dragged me to the nearest dentist and had me... Wow. Just like that, my life got turned around and... Wow. That is wild. Snuffy really did have bread, though. Like, I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know how expensive golden teeth are, but, like... He really did drag him to the nearest dentist and got him gold. And, like, straight dragged him, too. Like, Poe was not even walking with him. Mind blown, right? Me, a good-for-nothing street urchin, becoming a football player. What's your point? Duh. What I'm trying to say is... But, darn. Dragged out of the darkness by a man who lost his friend to it. Like... I mean, I love it. Like, like that's the and the most unfortunate thing is, I'm not sure. No, I like. The, here's the thing. There's a big, like, at least to me, there's a big internal debate I have on when Blue Lock is going to end, right? Because like, there are a lot of manga that I really, really like that are wrapping up relatively quickly. Like, Black Clover may be ending this year or early next year. JJK is definitely ending this year at this point at the rate it's going it has to end this year Fortnite isn't ending for a while i don't think i think i got at least like two more years on Fortnite. i ain't worried about that one that one's fine but like undead unluck is seeming to be wrapping up soon i don't know i kind of zoned out of blue box <laughs> blue box i won't lie <laughs> there's only one thing that's named that has blue in the name that can be peak at a time and unfortunately it's blue lock and not blue box so i kind of zoned out of that but like heck, i'll admit well, to be fair, I did that on purpose. <laughs> like, the reason there hasn't been a regular Ride Rock review is because I want to review... I want to do... Just, it'll be a little thought experiment. I want to live react to an entire fight. I've avoided everything about Tesla versus Buggy Boy. So I kind of just stopped. And I was like, fine, I'll wait. I'll wait till the fight begins. And I'll record through all that. But I know the fight concluded recently. And then I need to see... I want to wait one more chapter so we can get, like, the wrap-up of the fight. So I can do, like, a whole thing. It's a, it's a whole thing I was just planning out that I wanted to do because I think it'd be neat. But... The, I also don't think that's going to end anytime soon, so I'm safe on that. But, like, the main manga I read, like, they're they're starting to wrap up. And Blue Lock is in a weird spot because a lot of people are convinced there's going to be, like, a club arc after this. But I forget which chapter it stayed in, but I did see it. The Neo Egotist League ends when the World Cup starts. The U-20 World Cup. Japan's going to be playing in that. There is no club arc happening. It is the Neo Egotist League and then end. We immediately cut to the World Club arc. Not the World Club arc. The uh, World Cup arc. So there's not there's not any like cooldown in between that, and if they win the World Cup, is is that it? Are we done? Or are we actually gonna follow these guys later in? And the reason I say that is because I'm afraid we aren't gonna see these characters again. Cause like, well, Lorenzo maybe Lorenzo we may see, but we won't get to see Snuffy play. We won't get to see Snuffy play. We won't get to see Noah play. We won't get to see um, Chris Prince play. We won't get to see any of them play. Because they're over 20. So we aren't going to see them in the U-20 World Cup. So unless we go further and, like, Blue Lock literally follows them until they literally become number one. Like, straight up, they win the U-20 World Cup and then they need to come back and defend in, like, the real World Cup. Then maybe, maybe we're going that far. But I'm not sure. I'm legit not sure. 
I would love to see more characters like these. I would love to see more Lorenzo now. <laughs> Bro still looks a little bit off-putting to me, but like I'd still love to see Lorenzo more now. I want to see more Snuffy. I even with how little we got of Lava Hino and his side dude, I I want to see more of them too. And I especially want to see more Prince and Augie and all that. But I'm not sure. Are we gonna be able to see him? I genuinely no clue. I'm like <laughs> I'm a little bit concerned because I love these characters. This is fantastic. I want to see more of them. I want to see more of them now. And that's that may not happen. That's why I'm concerned. But let's see. What I'm trying to say is, Snuffy's the type of guy who won't abandon the less fortunate. He's crazy enough to give him a future. Okay? Mmm. Because what? Okay. So Lorenzo was listening. Because what did Barrow say? Barrow said, I'm not, I'm not going to listen to a guy who's afraid of the future. Even though he, that literally makes no sense. Like, I already went over how that makes no sense. So I'm not going to go into another rant about that. But Lorenzo is who was stubborn and arrogant and also didn't believe in snuffy is coming to the next guy who's stubborn and arrogant and didn't believe in snuffy he's like hey don't don't sleep snuffy woke that big old schnauzer is it can guide you it's pointing to creation trust me he's the right guy he's the kind of guy you you'd be good to follow i think that's great look look i, I do really like that that's nice that's nice I, I, that's some chef's kids love that let's see Let's see how Barrow reacts, because he's been he's been very uh dogmatic these past two chapters. But let's see. Oh you two. Time for training. That is, if you want to. Da. Woof woof. Okay, forget all I said about Lorenzo. Forget all I said about Lorenzo. Forget wanting to see him again. Remove him. Remove him from straight. <laughs> Take him to the principal's office right now, Mr. Electric. Like, like straight up remove him. What? Da. Woof woof. He also meowed at Isagi. So is he just... I mean, I guess he grew up in a world where... He, now it makes sense why he's a little bit off kilter. He grew up without parents and probably not in the school system or anything like that. He had to swindle people for money growing up. So I guess it makes sense that he's pretty, like, not socially adapted. And he probably did spend a lot of time around dogs and cats. I guess. Like, and this isn't just Lorenzo's fault. I think you'd be hard-pressed to get me to not react strangely or find it weird if any character in Blue Lock went, da, woof, woof. I think, like, it could be anyone. It could be Henri. It could be Isagi. It could be Pachira. <laughs> it could be the guy that literally looks like a dog. Like, what is, who's that one guy from the U20? I think he's on BM. Like, who literally has a dog nose. And, like... Pachero went fox face bark bark at him like legitimately like I've I don't even think you could get him to say that and not have me being like huh but coming from Lorenzo like bro look at this look at this image what is this image bro but let's see okay Barrow's thinking Barrow's thinking are you finally gonna you finally gonna be reasonable Barrow I know you I know you end up being reasonable which is why I kind of feel bad about clown on you earlier but no I don't <laughs> but two all right I, I know it's gonna happen but let's see if this is what broke you hold on a sec I'll work with you Wow, wonderful. You decided to give yourself a chance. <laughs> but not as your successor. I'll become a striker who that surpasses you. That's what a successor is, Borrow. Because you're succeeding where the previous person ended. But, like, hold on, maybe. Maybe I'm just late. Hold on. Because, you know, I don't, I'm not that good with my English. So let me double check. Let me check what successor means. Successor, definition. I want straight to the Googler. A person or thing that succeeds another. He's not asking you to be a copy of him. He's asking you to succeed him. And let's see what succeed means. Because who knows? Maybe, 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 maybe. Achieve a desired dream or result. Attain fame, wealth, and social status. Take over a throne, inheritance, office, or other position from. Become the new rightful holder. Come after and take the place of. He's asking you to succeed him because you're going to come after and take the place of him as the next king. He's not saying become a carbon copy of him. That's probably physically impossible. Bar you idiot. Let's see. I'll become a striker who surpasses you. Snuffy, your job is to help me become king of the footballing world. Okay? Yeah. That was his job forever ago. You idiot. <laughs> but, but let's see. Nah. Excellent, Barrow, shall I? You got yourself a deal. All right. But now I completely understand why he wears that headband. 
Bro, that's a massive one. Where was the headband in the match? Bro needs to put that thing on. You got yourself a deal. From now on, this squad will act as your arms and legs. Our strategies will be centered around you. Perfect. All right, makes sense, makes sense. That's why your job is to refine and evolve your ability as a goal hunter, especially your 1v1s against a goalkeeper. First, your mid-range curve shot from 28 meters is already top-notch, but that shot's easy to stop if one can figure out the timing and motion. A world-class goalkeeper won't let you score so easily. Remember, you don't shoot when you want to shoot. You shoot when the enemy lowers its guard. Mmm. Mmm. Because that is the thing, right? I mentioned that before, and I was talking about it. So Barrow took the swing last chapter. If you know Barrow, and you know that Barrow's the only striker that's worth anything on that team, don't you just always stop Barrow? Because he has the 28-meter scrolling goal. That's the that's the thing. That's why people like Shido. That's why people like, I'd say even say Rin, Xay, and now Isagi most likely are so stupidly dangerous because they have a pattern quote unquote but their pattern is super duper general like get into general area of scoring range and shoot they don't usually shoot to the same part of the goal they don't usually shoot to the same area of the goal they will just shoot at random that's why say caught gagamaru so off guard when he scored scored in the u20 that's why rin caught everybody so off guard also he did the thing that borrow did most likely hiding behind the defense and then shooting which also is a little bit off-putting but he also had crazy goals before where he kind of just poof, appeared out of nowhere and shot into the goal. They're absolutely random. Shido is the ultimate definition of I happen to be in the penalty box or near it in the case of his best goal. I will just shoot at random. Like, that's the thing. It's the randomization aspect that Barrow was always missing. Obviously, the reproducible goal formula is the point of blue block, but you almost, I'd say you almost want your formula to be a bit random. Like, you want it to be reproducible. You want to be able to get into a general area and shoot. But that's the same issue that hypothetical Chigiri has. Like, yeah, you know about the 44-meter golden zone. You know exactly where he's going to aim. Just get ready <laughs> and see what he's about to shoot. And be like, all right, blocked. Same thing with someone like, um... I'm about to say, I can't think of another one. It's mainly Chigiri and Baro that have, like, this is the area where I shoot and score. But I'll even give someone like Nagi credit. Nagi's also pretty random. Like, he has the ability to mix up how you score, yet still have a reproducible goal formula is good. Nagi's goal formula is ball comes to me from Rayo. I put ball in goal. That can be really close to the goal, like we almost saw him score for the second time in the Manchester City match. It can be relatively far from the goal when we saw him do the five-state shot volley. That's still the same goal formula. Get the ball from Rayo and shoot. But even with that, it's different. Thusly, a goalkeeper wouldn't be able to start predicting it. For Isagi, he shot from weird places, whether it be to the left side of the goal, the right side of the goal, in front of the goal, with his left foot, now his right foot. Like, he can do either. That's a bunch of mix-ups that he can kind of just do. So the goalkeeper doesn't have, like, a formula that they can study and be like, all right, we just got to shut that one single area down. For, once again, I mentioned Shido. I mentioned Rin. Heck, even Kaiser. The thing about Kaiser is that with Kaiser Impact, the fastest swing speed in the world, he can kind of also just randomize from where he's shooting. Yeah, he probably has an optimal range. We don't know exactly where that is yet. But we've literally seen him either get all up in the goalie's face and be like, here, boom, and immediately launch off with like his first Kaiser Impact. Or bro literally had six defenders in front of him and still like razor shot it straight on through them. So the randomization aspect of those players is what put them a level above, at least in my opinion, with Barrow. Because Barrow had the one area. We've seen Barrow's area of entry usually get locked down before. He's he's had moments where he's broken that rule. Like in the, the his most famous goal, the U20 goal, is a direct contradiction to his regular formula. But even still, he needs like more. He needs to be able to add mix-ups, layers to it, so the goalkeeper isn't always able to defend. And like Snuffy says here, remember, you don't shoot when you want to shoot. You shoot the instant the enemy lowers its guard. And that's where some of the best goals in the entire series come from. It's when their guard was lowered because, like, they weren't expecting it. The best goal in the entire series, once again, in my opinion, you know, Shido's backwards kick, axe kick straight to the goal. Yeah, Takamaru was off guard. He didn't think that was going to happen. Think of Rin when he scored in the U-20 and had that sneaky little hider shot. He caught everybody off guard. He was like, oh, well, that didn't even seem like a scoring opportunity. He swung with his right. Isagi, his most famous goal in the U20, he caught everybody off guard and literally appeared where he wasn't even supposed to be and then scored it. it Isagi's invert, like there's so many, the 
idea of shooting when you want to shoot not doing that but shooting when the opponent's off guard is very well ingrained within blue lock and borrow's sort of been ironically enough despite being the joker card kind of the exception to that rule because he always has his pretty reproducible goal formula but now we see him mixing it up and we see a predator constantly uses its senses to see the moment its prey relaxes and drops its guard oh wait hold on who the heck has the ball right now mm, okay so there's Isagi. there's my boy but all right, all right. So essentially, that that's a that's a good way to work around um, the weakness of only having Barrow as a proper shooter, because if you do like force the goalkeeper off guard, or realistically, it's not even like Gagamaro is on edge. You can see him being like sweating and staring really, really hard. But with that being the case, it's that moment of confusion, that moment of weakness, that moment where like they don't know the entire situation that's the perfect time for you to boom catch them lacking like catch them for lack of a better term catch them with their pants down because it's like oh no i was <laughs> I should have wasn't ready for that and with that being the case it makes sense especially for someone like borrow who is built around like the whole stealing goals idea or hunting for openings the idea to make sure that the opponent's guard is down before shooting makes sense like a lion sneaks up on a gazelle when its guard is down not when the gazelle's looking straight at it so w man snuffy w man's in, in all the ways like i can't even say in more ways than one and literally all the ways snuffy is a w man except for that big old schnauzer his and that like empire state building size forehead and i know that is in fact the pot calling the kettle but hey i can't help that i have a big forehead i have a big forehead so i can call other people with a big forehead my nose is not as gargantuan as Snuffy's. It may be large, but it's not as gargantuan as Snuffy's. But let's see. Who the heck has the ball right now? No, they blocked the goalkeeper's view so he can't see the ball. A split second blind spot. <gasps> he stepped. By the time you realize it, it's already too light. A move that requires super high level teamwork. Stealth Slayer Shot. Mm. Ironically enough, you know what this looks like? This looks exactly like the goal, or at least the position that he saw he was in when Borrow passed to him. If you remember way back when to second selection in the battle against Kunigami, Rayo, and Shigiri, that pose that Isagi made when he scored his direct shot off of Borrow's pass, that's the exact same position he's in. I like that. I like that. I wonder if that has to be intentional. Knowing the blue lock mangaka, that has to be intentional. And I like that. I like that. Because it's you, it's kind of the same scenario, utilizing the weakness of someone else in order to steal a goal. That's what Isagi did then. That's what Barrow's doing now. So of course they mirror each other in that position. I like that. I like that a lot. We love some parallels. We love some parallels. How about let's see, like tomorrow. <laughs> so that did that did just go in. Big old goal. Excellent work. Serve me, Ubers. Mm -mm -mm. To be continued in chapter two hundred seventeen. Predator I. Oh, even he got the mouth on the back of his head. Whew. Wait till you get that tatted, bro. Wait till you get that tatted. However, that ties up the game. Big question, though. Where the heck is Kaiser? Like, where is bro? <laughs> like, I was low-key expecting him or he saw, we saw, he saw, he saw he was here. So we know where he was. But where was Kaiser? It's not, unless he's like standing on the opposite side of the field with Lorenzo, just letting them score. Like, I have no idea where he was. He should have been there but he wasn't even in the mess like he was just not he has not appeared in the past like three chapters so where is he i know he's sad right now because you know noah said he can't mess with his boy toy but like where you at bro where you at we need you however overall yeah it's a worthy chapter obviously obviously this works on multiple levels as much as I clowned, bullied, antagonized Borrow and all the Borrow fans out there, I still, I, don't, I can't say I like it for Borrow. <laughs> like, this is one chapter where I think Borrow's, like, egotism is a little bit too stupid, a little bit too headstrong, where it's like, I don't think I can even remotely bother supporting that. But what really carries a chapter for me is 
the extra characterization of Don Lorenzo, giving us his backstory, giving us his reason for being the way he is, obsessed with money from the streets, growing up in the slums, growing up in the worst environment possible, and then being given a chance, being given a chance by Snuffy. And Snuffy's extra characterization, seeing someone who also is lo close to losing themselves to, the to that darkness that took his friend. He pulls them out of the darkness, he takes his time, he invests in them, and he turns them into people who are literally world-class players. Don Lorenzo went from a street urchin, as he says himself, to one of the new gen world 11. The glow up is immaculate. Bro has golds. He has golds. <laughs> like legitimately, bro leveled up so much because of Snuffy's care. And I can even, even though I do think Bar was being a little bit too dogmatic here and like being a little bit too stupid for, for my taste, him finally coming around because of that, finally understanding, okay, this man isn't just like chasing the dreams of the dead. He's also working to drastically impact and has succeeded impacting the world of the living. Because I think Baro, I think the main reason Baro comes around is because he sees Lorenzo. Now that he knows that, oh, this dude took a random, a nobody who had probably never touched a soccer ball in his life and rose him to the level of the new gen world 11. And presumably not that long of a time span. Like Lorenzo, I'm not sure how old Lorenzo was in this flashback, but I don't think it was that old. So I think Baro understands like, oh, okay. So this whole geezer, he can actually, he can actually whip me into shape. If I, I'm already starting from a way higher basis. If with Snuffy's mentality and training i can get that much better i finally will i will be able to do that so i'll even appreciate that part of borrow and obviously you know i love his goal i love his goal i love that that's, that's some w he that's some w referencing right here so overall super duper w chapter i'm excited for next chapter predator i i'm assuming it's going to explain a little bit more in depth on borrow's new like hunter ability and or because we know there's another predator lurking around, even though he hasn't appeared in a couple chapters. Kaiser. We could see Kaiser reflecting on like, oh, oh, he got eyes like me. Because notably, Kaiser's metavision has been portrayed differently than all the other users of metavision we've hypothetically seen. And it's mainly Asagi. Asagi has the puzzle pieces. Rayo has the weird, like, kind of pseudo copy thing in his eye. And then it's Aiku who's shown like a base kind of pseudo knockoff metavision who had, like, a, the same thing that Rayo had, like, the subconscious metavision. That seems to be portrayed by, like, the lines in the eye. So, the who had a metavision with a predator eye? It was Kaiser. He had the slit eyes. Like, either a cat... I've, I've seen comparisons between a cat and a snake with the slits. I think because they're, like, more dilated, they're a cat, but it could be a snake. So we could see Kaiser... Ironically, <laughs> you know, ironically enough, Corona always <laughs> has the predator eyes. But we could see Isagi being like, oh, ooh. Baro, that's some new tech. Give me that. Or Kaiser be like, oh, Baro, I like the tech. I already have that. So I'm intrigued to see where Isagi takes this because now the game's tied up. Now the tension's running high. Sure, this is something that they may struggle to reproduce, like especially against, you know, the ever-adapting, ever-evolving Isagi and Kaiser. But I'm intrigued. I'm very, very intrigued. Super W chapter. But those are my thoughts. Please see what you guys think in the comment section down below. If you made it all the way to the end, This is a thing I already ate. <laughs> so I'm not hungry. Oh, uh, you know what? Put biscuit down below. Put biscuit. Put biscuit down below. You made it all the way to the end because that's what I have for breakfast. But regardless, thank you so much for watching. If you to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And make sure that the little notification supposed to miss out on any videos that come to the channel. Also, also I do a Patreon below. Each one is as little as one. Count them one. Not monthly. This is videos, early content, and more. You also now become a member of the channel for as little as three as a month to get the same perks and more. Now, thank you so much for watching once again. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is that with the pencil. Writing off.